How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me again on tea. I'm gonna taste this jambalaya first. Let's just go ahead on and cook. Get the part of the chicken that I like. Turtle stew, come here, boy. Mm. You know that looks good? This is going to be good, I guarantee you. Talk to it like it knows what I'm talking about. I like it, it's good. I believe in easy cooking, believe me, I do. How y'all are? I'm glad for you to see me, I guarantee. And today, I'm gonna make a venison stew. That's deer meat stew. And I never will forget the first time I went deer hunting in my life. It was in North Louisiana, and I was living with the district attorney, kind of his bodyguard and, and uh, a companion, because he was an old man and needed a lot of help. And I was his chauffeur. And uh, I went on a game preserve where he wasn't supposed to go, but I didn't figure he'd put me in jail. He would have if he had known it. And I got out there in the woods, and I was with the marshal of the town, this little town. And he said, now, don't get the buck egg. I said, I ain't gonna get no buck egg, man. Don't worry about me. I'm from South Louisiana. I'm not gonna get any buck egg. Well, I want you to know the most beautiful deer you ever saw in your life came up there with a big rack of horn. And I got shaking so much, I had to lie down and put that 30 30 rifle I had to aim at that deer. And I aimed at his shoulder, you know? And I fired one time, I hit him right between the eyes. And I said, man, I didn't have the book egg. He said, I was afraid you were going to shoot me. The marshal said, he hid behind a tree while I was doing it. <laughs> now, this is a rule that I spent two hours making early this morning to getting it just right, the way I could put all this stuff in that got to go. But I'm not going to cook that first. What I'm going to cook first is, is this pepper mushroom rice. And it is delicious. You're going to find it out when you taste it. That two cup of rice. Put that in there like that. Put this out of the way because I need that spoon. And into that rice, I'm going to put uh, a two cup of long grain rice. Now, what I put in there. I got the more, oh, let me put some salt in there. I'm going to put a teaspoon and a half. I'm going to put two teaspoons in there. I put a teaspoon of, of salt in every, to, to every cup of rice that I cook. And that's a teaspoon. You don't believe it. But it is. <laughs> and I'm going to show you. I'll do that again. That's a teaspoon. Sit down there. Come here to me, you little old teaspoon. You let us prove to these people I know what I'm doing here. That's a teaspoon. And if it ain't a teaspoon, I'll eat the, eat the damn pot and all. All right, now let's go in there and be a teaspoon, please. There it is, teaspoon. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I stir that in there. And then I'm going to put about a ta two tablespoons full of finely chopped onion and stir it in there. You don't put any fire under that yet, no. Then I'm going to put about uh, two tablespoons of finely chopped bell pepper, sweet pepper. Good in there. Just don't mess my hands clean, I washed them yesterday. <laughs> now into this, let me stir you in there too. Get you in there right. This is delicious rice, believe me. Into that, I'm gonna put uh, about, oh, I think this is a teaspoon of chopped, finely chopped garlic, and it's chopped finely. A very lovely lady does that for me. Doris Monteleon gives me that to about a quarter. And I know that's a lot of work here. I've done it, so I know it's work. Now into this, I'm gonna put some sliced mushrooms. These are just regular mushrooms that you can get in any store that's got mushrooms. Come on out of there, I've got to get you right. Now I've got that. And I'm gonna put all that, get all that mixed up together. I'm gonna put some olive oil in this too when I get the water. Now I'm going to put some water in there. And uh, people say, how much water? I say, how much rice you got? We don't know. Well, 
what I know, and I know it works every time. I put water in here to cover that right to this, to my index finger, that's what they call it, index finger right there, that first joint. And it always comes out right. And you boil all the water, most of the water out of it. So I don't want to get too much. That, that just, just go to the right, go on. Not quite, a little bit more. See, that's wet right to there. That's all the water I want to put in it. And I put the fire on that and turn it up. Come on, let's stir you in there. Got the salt, got everything except the olive oil. Now I'm gonna put the olive oil and I'm gonna check one more time. Just exactly right, oh man. You're getting better at that as you get older. That's me, you know, as you stand. Now you're supposed to put in here, and this recipe says two tablespoons full. This may be a, a, a fraction more. I doubt it though. Put a fraction more in there. Put it on there like this. Imagine that tablespoon all the time, you know. <laughs> That's two tablespoons, or close, close enough. Suits me, and I'm the one to believe about this thing right now. And you stir. Now I put the fire under that. And I never get used to these stoves, but that's the right one. And I'm gonna put that on a medium and boil most of the water out of it. I'm not gonna put that in there and put it over here. And stir one more once right now. And I'll stir, I'll stir my rice every now and then. Get that going. Now you're going all right. Move the salt, put it over here. I mean, need some more. Plant it on it. Get this kind of, oh, we got to move this recipe. I keep my recipes around so I can uh, be sure I don't make mistakes. When you write a, a lot of recipes in creative cooking, you can't, you don't try to, rem I don't try to remember all of them. Put that over there. Now this is venison stew, as I said earlier. I took a while making this dog roux, you hear me? In fact, my stirring hand is kind of tired I'm doing it, but I think I'll be all right, though. I'll be okay. Into this, I've got a little water in there. Got, it says here, I made this room with about three, three-fourths cup of olive oil in a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. That means, don't, that don't mean that self-rising flour. That means right that don't self-rise. Now I'm gonna put some chopped onion in there. And let me move this out of the way. I may spill that water. I better put some water in here while I'm thinking about it. I got that water in there some, but I'll put some more maybe. Into this room, I'm gonna put a cup of chopped onion. And I'm gonna stir it. I'm gonna raise the fire a little bit too. Got every bit of that that time. That's nice. Get in there. Don't you dare. Stir these onions in there because I got to cook them until they, until they are, are um, put this on a medium low fire. Low, yeah, that's good. Now, into this now, I'm going to put some bell pepper. Stir that in there. I'm going to have the most, you know, and don't do good. That's about uh, half a cup of chopped bell pepper. Oh, man. Oh, they're sweet. They're sweet, sweet, sweet. Stir it in there. That roux looks pretty good, even if I did make it myself. Hmm, smells good too. And then I've got to put some chopped parsley in there. I'll ch I chop the stems and, and the leaves of uh, parsley because both of them have flavor, real good flavor. And this calls for a, a tin cup of water, maybe a little bit more. And in this uh, venison stew, I put iced potatoes too, goddamn. 
Well, then it is, I got to keep going on this. I got to put some celery. That looks like, no, that's green onion. Let's see. That ain't celery, no, that's green onion. I can't. Boy, I love them. I need them like stick candy. I like them so much. Man, hey, you, come on. You're doing good there now, as you stand. Let's get to going. We'll let that cook just a least little bit while I put in here some of the stuff I'm going to have to use. Believe it or not, I'm going to put a cup of white Chablis, Chablis wine, wine that I would, would drink, be glad to, if I wasn't working. <laughs> put that in there and put this lid right back where it was. And I'm going to put that fire on under that on a low fire. Put that on low. Stir this a little bit more. I want those onions. All I want the onions to do is get clear so I can say they're most done. Put that in there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to put in this to make it go all right. A little water. I'm going to put some more water in there too. Put a little water. Hear that sizzle? I mean. Now the reason I use cold water, and the reason I do when I'm when I make a roux, I put cold water and the roux comes out smooth. I put hot water, it never does. So I quit putting hot water. You nothing but cold water when I make a roux. You're doing good there, man. Mm-hmm. Stir the rice. Some people say, don't have a stir the rice. They don't know what they're talking about. When you got all this in it, you better stir it. Oh, and this tastes so good. So very good. Whoo! Boy, oh, you're doing good there, right? I got to stir this up, don't, it'll burn. And you burn the roux, you got to start all over. That's bad, but it's true. Mm-hmm. I got to put a little cayenne pepper in that water. I got to salt it to taste, too. My taste. <laughs> a little cayenne pepper, not much. That's less than a, than a quarter of a teaspoonful of cayenne pepper. And it'll taste good. And I'm going to stir it too, so. A lot of stirring going on here, huh? Put this lid. Come in. Put it over here out of my way for just the time being. But I'm gonna put some more water in there. Oh, and I got stuff right. Looking so good. Don't want all them mushrooms to be in one place, no. Then I'm gonna put that heat diffuser under it. Put that lid on top of it. After most all the water is cooked right out of it. Now I got three pounds of venison. That's strap, black strap. Somebody give it. I didn't kill that deer. And I got three cup of potato. And I got some. And right here, this is, is mint, dried mint. That's a teaspoonful of dried mint. And I use mint rather than, let me fix that far, than any, any other than bay leaf because it doesn't just haul off there and take up all of the taste. This right here. I got to put this roux in there because this, these, these onions are getting over clear. I can see through them, that's clear. And what I'm gonna do is turn this fire off. I wanna be sure I got a fire under that other water. I don't have what I'm fixing to have. Got a good fire in there. Turn that fire up some, down some. This is on low, I'm gonna cut this one. I got that up where I want. I'm gonna cut this one off because I'm going to throw my rice right now. You're looking good, rice. Don't you do anything to me. Be good. Now I'm gonna put this in there. All of this roux and stir it as I put it in there. 
If this in there good, go in. Turn the fire up a little bit. The way this, this uh, root oil is just smooth, just smooth as velvet. Look at that. I try to get all of it that I can, too. Then I'll put the vinegar in there and the tater. Mmm, mmm. You're doing all right there, I guarantee you, Rue. Put this little spoon down here and use a bigger spoon so and get this all out of there in a hurry. That old clear onion look right at me and see, we depreciate that. <laughs> oh, man. Try to get as much of it as you can. I can get all of it if I took my time, but I haven't got that kind of time. Oh, man. I want to be sure that root takes up that water, which it's doing, doing good. Just because you want to stick to the bottom, you think you're going to get away from me, you're not going to do it. I'm going to get every bit of you and put you in that pot where you belong. Gotcha. That's good enough. I don't care what anybody says. You know, I got to get rid of this thing here. I'll just put it right over here because I'm fixing to do something with this lid, like putting it on that butt of rice. Hey, boy. Get together here now. It's hot, you don't dare look at it any quicker than that. Got it cooking just right. Now you see, all of that good roux has resolved itself with the rest of that water in there like it's supposed to. Oh boy. Now, let me tell you something. I like good deer meat. The secret of cooking deer meat is not to marinate it, but to be damn sure you take all the fat away from it. You get all the fat off of that. If you, if you eat alligator, you got to take all the fat off of that, too. And boy, I'll tell you, all right, dear meat, venison. Let's put that in there now. And I'm going to use my hand in there, like I told you, they clean you. Yeah. Washed them yesterday. And I keep them clean like that because I do a lot of cooking. I love to cook. My mama taught me how, and I'm eight years old, and I've been cooking ever since. I hoboed and cooked in the hobo jungle, and nobody ever whipped me because I cooked a bad dish. I knew I better not cook a bad dish. All right, let's us just go in there, all of you. Got it. And I'm going to wipe my hands on my good dish towel I carry right there and stir. Don't forget to stir. Now, all the water's going out of my rice. And it is bubbly, bubbly in the little holes. And I don't even have to stir that rice again. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the fire down real low, put it on a simmer, simmer. Put that on simmer, 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 simmer. Come on down there. Now you're going. Now you're getting to it. Now you got it. Now I'll put this underneath there. Just like that. Put the lid on it. Let it stay that way for just exactly 30 minutes, that's all. Just 30 minutes. Now let me stir again. Don't those people know we're having fun here, calling on that phone line? Now? <laughs> I can tell you, I'm not going to go to the phone. I'm going to make this venison stew right now. Come here, potatoes. These Irish potatoes been peeled and chopped. Go in there. Hey, you know that's hot? <laughs> yeah, we got it. And stir. Now, we, we put about 10 cups of cold water, is what we did here. 
and it works out all right. I think I'm gonna put a little more water, just a little, to be sure I got everything covered. I don't like anything floating around and looking at me like that. So I'm gonna put about another two cups of water. One cup. Two cups, gotcha. And stir. And I put some cayenne pepper, so I'm not gonna put any Louisiana hot sauce in there. But that just as smooth as velvet, a little more water. That wasn't quite a cup, that last one. And that makes it a cup. That's a little more than 10 cups of water. It depends on how much venison you got and how much potato you got. I'm gonna put the lid back on that and turn the fire down and let it cook up a storm. It'd be all right with me. Whoo, boy. Hey, baby. Got everything going just like it should. Parts on there right, a little. Nothing looking right. Let me, walk, let me dry my hands. One thing I didn't put in there was salt. That's why I keep that salt box out where I can see it. I got a lot of meat. Got four pounds of meat, I think it is. Three pounds of boneless venison. And I got about the same amount of oil I poured in that hand. That hand don't know how to measure. This hand does. <laughs> One teaspoon. Two teaspoon. Teaspoon and a quarter. And a little more just for lining up, you know. <laughs> now I stir that one more once. Mm -hmm. You know I'm gonna taste that for salt. All right, you stand, let's taste it. This is the tasting spoon, see? No need another damn thing except to cook a while to be sure you cook the meat and let me put that fire where I want it. I think so I better put that on medium low so it won't cook too fast. Cut it just right. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sit down over here and try to remember a story I wanna tell you. I haven't told this in a long time. So if I mess it up, you'll laugh anyhow, will you? <laughs> Oh, I got something served for me over here. Don't that nice. First of all, before I do anything else, I'm gonna put my rice in my venison stew. Every bit of it. You need that rice without putting it anywhere except in your stomach. And pour, pour just a little bit of wine. A red wine. Oh, now that's, that's nearly a whole swallow. Not just a swallow, half a swallow, you know. Then I put a napkin on here. I want to tell you about this Caden where they struck oil on this place down near Abbeville, Louisiana. And man, he, he, it just got to him. He got the big head real bad. He wanted to just do this and do that. And he said, he, he's going to fly an airplane. To one of his friends, and his friend said, man, you don't know nothing about it. He said, I'm going to go get a lesson, man. I'm not going to try to fly that airplane without getting a lesson. So he went and he got, got certified pilot for an airplane. And he told his friend, he said, I'm gonna make a nonstop flip to LaGuardia Airport in New York City. His friend said, you better go where you can stop and get some gas on there. He said, I'll stop and get gas, but it's gonna be a nonstop flip. So he said, so he left. He left New Orleans. He stopped in Birmingham, got fooled up again. He left there and stopped in Washington, D.C., got fooled up again. And he left there and he went to LaGuardia Field and it was so foggy, you could not see your hand on your face unless you rub it real hard, you know? <laughs> and he's flying around there and he looked at his fuel, was getting low and he went on the radio, he said, this is the Abbeville Ace. I'm calling LaGuardia Field. My gasoline is getting real low and will you please give me some instructions on how to get in there, huh? He didn't get no answer. And he flew around a little bit more, and the gasoline was much more lower than it was. And he called it, hey, this is the Abbeville Age, LaGuardia for you. Will you please give me some destruction? I don't got enough gas to go very much far, no. I guarantee, please give me some destruction. Nobody answering. And he flew around a little more, and all the gasoline gone. And he picked up that radio, he said, look, I'm, I'm down to a thousand feet. 
and I got no more gas, my engine don't run some more, the propeller done stop. Will you please give me some destructions? Hi. Abbeville Radio come on said, this is LaGuardia Field. We're going to give you some instruction right now. We said, well, go ahead and, and, and give them to me. They say, the best thing you can do is say, now lay me down to sleep. <laughs> Take a little sip of this wine. Mm -hmm. Now, come here to me, rice and vinegar and stew. Mm -hmm. That is good, yeah. Woo-hoo-hoo, I'm glad. Oh, yeah.